How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. Ranking games like I love to do, this time from Game Tech. I've had a few requests for this one and figured it was about time to get Game Tech done and out of the way and over with. This company is all over the place. I mean, mostly known for game shows, like game show games ported from game shows to the NES, but there's like a racing game on here. There's like children's games on here too. We're gonna cover all of them in this video from Game Tech for the NES. This list, however, unlike the other lists, I have to rank almost based on would I play this again, because game shows coming to the NES, uh, like, I'm, lo I'm looking less into, like, you know, graphics and sound and how awesome the game is, and more about would I play this again. And some of these games on this list, I still play today. Every once in a while, I just pop them in and check them out for a little bit. Other ones, not so much. So my ranking in this time may not make a whole lot of sense, especially compared to my other ranking videos, but we're gonna get through it all the same. Starting off with American Gladiators. I used to watch this on Saturdays. Loved this show. I guess you can consider it a game show, but there's like an athletic element to it too. I just thought it was a lot of fun. It just looked so cool. A few different gameplay elements in this one. You have the Joust. Joust was always one of the more popular ones, I think. You just have like, these giant Q-tips basically, and you're just trying to pop the other guy off the stage and off the platform. They expand on this one a little bit more. So like when you defeat one enemy, you then you have to like jump across more platforms to get to the other guy. That one didn't exist in the game show, but still cool that it was on here. There's the wall. They have to climb up the wall as fast as you can without being dragged down or pulled down by the other, um, you know, by the American gladiator, I guess. Or whoever the, who, are the, who are the other gladiators called? Were they just called gladiators? Human cannonball. This one's fun. You just uh, jump on the rope and smash it into the other guy and hopefully you can knock him off the stage. It's, you're a human cannonball, right? Powerball. This one's pretty cool. This one might be the most sport-like. You have to grab the ball run through the other guys, you know, pop your ball into the, the goal, I guess. It's like these these five baskets in the play field. And you have to like go to the other side, grab a ball, then go to the top and north. You're just going up and down as fast as you can. And then Assault, which is a lot like, it's, it's staged a little bit like the final stage of American Gladiators, where you're like trying to, you know, get to certain points and like trying to hit the target from the guy trying to shoot at you. But this one, you're always moving and you're just picking up missiles and you're just trying to knock the other guy out while you're moving too. Makes it kind of a shooter in a way, but I mean, it's something. And this game in itself is something. I'll give it a C. Classic Concentration was one of my favorite game shows. Whenever I stayed home from school sick, um, I loved watching this show. Not as much as Price is Right. However, this one was right up there too. It's memory. It's the matching game. It's the, you have to like, you know, what items are behind the thing and get the two to match. Only these items, the two items, are prizes. And if it's the prize, you know, you get like, and again, you're thinking late 80s, early 90s. So it's like, you know, you match the VCRs together, then the VCR prize goes to your pile. And if you win, then you get that VCR, which I thought was kind of a cool idea. The more you eliminate, the more it shows a puzzle. Uh, it, it reveals this picture, a rebus, if you will, um, that if you kind of sound it out or sound, you know, like kind of figure out what it says. I love these picture puzzles. I love these mind games. Um, then then you win and you move on from there. And this is one of those games I still come back to and play every once in a while. I just like the idea that, you know, it unveils the picture and then that picture in itself is a puzzle. And if you, again, sound it out or figure it out and remove the letters or add letters or whatever, then it becomes usually like a common phrase or a catchphrase uh, or something like that. I like this game quite a bit. I'll give it a B. Double Dare was, man, I mean, that was like a game show for kids, right? I mean, it was, it was one of the best. Man, I loved it. This one combines some trivia with the physical challenges, the uh, the art of, it's usually timed elements or balancing elements or something like that of how you actually play the mini games in this. Sometimes you play a mini game to, uh, to see who goes first, and then sometimes you do a mini game in lieu of answering a question. If you don't know what the answer is, you can go for the physical challenge and, and hope for the best. But really, I mean, you always think about the stunts in this game. You always think about the activities in this game. But so much of this game is just answering basic questions. And it gives you a couple of options. It gives you, like, here, you know, here's the, an the question, three answers on the board. If you don't know, you can pass it to the other guys. And if they get the question right, then they get the double the points. But then it'll turn into a double dare. It's like, I dare you to answer it. And then they might double dare you back. So then you get quadruple points, or you do the physical, physical challenge to you know, hopefully redeem yourself in a way. And if you know the answer and you don't think they do, pass it over to them, bring it back to you. Go and then get get all the money you can, of course. And the physical challenges, again, are usually like time-based or element-based, or you just have to like, you know, push one button to do something and then the other controller has to do something else. 
they're fun little mini games is all they are. They're just little mini games for Double Dare. The end of Double Dare, the final competition, I mean, it's all about that pie slide. I wanted to go down that pie slide so bad. Face first with my mouth open, you know what I'm saying? Uh, never never came about, but the final, ch it's, a, it's an obstacle course. It is it's a whole bunch of button mashing, basically, is all it is. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I mean, I'll also put this game as a C. Oh, Family Feud. This one is one of my top favorite game shows of all time. Not so much current day, modern day. They've certainly put the innuendo factor into the questions to get that kind of response from the audience. But growing up uh, in the Richard Dawson days and then later on, was it Ray Park was the, the, the next host? Um, I really, I watched a lot of Family Feud during that time. I thought it was a lot of fun and I still like Family Feud today. And if you're not familiar with what Family Feud is, it's two families uh, that go head to head and they just answer a question. It's like, hey, um, we asked 100 people this question and here are the top whatever answers, you know, the, the, the top most popular answers that they had. Playing a game like this now, you have to think late 80s, you have to think early 90s, because that's when this game came out. So when you uh, so when you see some of the questions and then like you see the answers, you're like, what, really? And you're like, no, no, that's that's the way it was. That's actually, that's pretty accurate for, for the time. Something to consider anyway. I'm a huge fan of this game. I'll put this game as an A. I still play it. Should we do the three Fisher Price games just to get them out of the way? I guess we could. Now again, I'm also going by not my personal preference, but my kids played a ton of these Fisher Price games when I was, not when I was growing up, when they were growing up, right? So I mean, I had these games for the old NES, so they were perfect for them when they were at a much younger age. In fact, when I was capturing this footage, uh, my oldest, who's now 15, almost 16 years old, came in and they're like, oh, I remember this game, it's called this. And, and they were right, this is Fisher Price Firehouse Rescue. Played a ton of this game. Starts out as a maze, and then you have to get to the point of destination within the time. And then once you're there, you have to get underneath where the, uh, where the animal is or the people are and then rescue them. And then you're good. And that's the whole game. That's Fisher Price. Firehouse Rescue. So based on their reaction, well, especially that, um, but <laughs> them coming in and saying, oh, this game, I want to play this game. It's like, no, you don't. I'm just capturing footage for it. Uh, so um, based on that reaction, I'll, no, I'll, I'll give this game a B. I'm going to give this game a B in and of itself. It's, it's great for kids. It really is. Fisher Price, I can remember this game is like classic concentration. It's that memory matching game. It's you have to undo the tiles. You, you turn over two of them, you get it wrong, then the next person turns over two more and you have to look for the same idea on those and then they just disappear and then you get that pile or whatever, you get the points, whatever the case is, uh, for I Can Remember. And it's a great, um, I mean, it's one of the it's one of the oldest kids games I can think of. It's like one of the first earliest, you know, games that kids can understand or get. It's like, okay, I don't see it yet, but I have to remember where that is. And great for uh, cognitive thinking, I guess. I don't even know if cognitive thinking is the right word, but it's great for, great for early development learning is this I Can Remember game for the Fisher Price. And it's fine, it's a C. Fisher Price Perfect Fit. This game is the one that they didn't really play much because even on the hardest difficulty setting, it was still too easy. It's puzzle, but not really. You have to match the silhouette to the silhouette and there's not really a challenge there. There's not really anything to do there. You just do it and you're just like, okay, you know, next. But, you know, it's, there's, there's not much going on with this game. I'll give this game a D. How about a sports game from Game Tech? That's right, we have Harlem Globetrotters. This game is actually a kind of a decent basketball game. It's not supposed to be, <laughs> I was about to say it's not supposed to be a great basketball game. They're gonna make it as good as they can anyway, right? But it's fine and it's actually pretty simple for a basketball game. There's not a lot of, you know, have to think on your feet, quick maneuvering and all that. It's just the, it's the Harlem Globetrotters. You either play as the Harlem Globetrotters or the other guys, the Washington Generals, I guess. I don't think they really call them by name in this game, but that's always who they play up against. And I'm not a betting man. However, if I was to wager on a game, I would never put my money on the Washington Generals. <laughs> Harlem Globetrotters has been an American staple of entertainment for decades. 
now. And if you see them live, I mean, it's hard to see a live events right now, but if you ever, if you ever come to your town, you're just like, oh, those guys, old school classic, they put on a show. It's such a great show, uh, you know, for grownups, for kids, especially for kids. Um, everyone gets involved. The referee has a good time too. There's so much happening and it's just, it's super fun to watch. I'm, I'm a big fan. And not just because they were in an episode of Scooby-Doo once upon a time. I mean, it's the Harlem Globetrotters. How can you go wrong? And the NES game, it plays like a fine, you know, basketball game. Every once in a while, there is a couple of things, you know, like the, the referee will trip over themselves or something like that, just for fun, because that's what happens when you watch the Harlem Globetrotters live. <laughs> this game's fine. Um, I mean, is it fine enough to give it a B though? No, I'll give it a C. <sighs> right, so Hollywood Squares. Whoever wrote this game needs to be institutionalized because the writing is pretty messed up. Nine celebrities, in this game it's just some random people, the hosts ask them a question, and then you have to say whether that's true or false, whether they got it right or wrong. And then the celebrity is compelled to make it funny. Well, let's, let's look at a couple of examples. True or false, university scientists recently crossed a firefly with a tobacco plant. True or false? It's the first self-start cigarette. Ha! All right, let's check out another one. What was the relationship between Peter Pan and Tinkerbell? Pretty, pretty uh, serious question here. Do you mean according to the book or according to the National Enquirer? Ha 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 ha! According to the World Book, when do boys usually become bigger and heavier than girls? I want you to think before you answer. Please don't just say something. Let's find out. Soon, we hope. This game's a B. They made four Jeopardy games, as well as four Wheel of Fortune games. We'll check those out at the end of the video. But four Jeopardy games, we're going to cover them quickly because Jeopardy is Jeopardy. And if you're overseas, you're not familiar with what Jeopardy is. Jeopardy was really confusing for me as a kid because the questions were like adult themed hard. They're like, you know, asking questions that I didn't have a clue for the most part. I'm a little bit better off now, but they ask them in a form of a question. Like they give you the answer and then you have to say the question. So the answer, the question rather, you know, they'll say a thing that's like, this is what happened. And then your answer to the question, question to the answer would be, what is this? Or who is this? Dumb idea. I don't know who came up with this idea. I, it's just, it's another take on a trivia question. We're gonna give you the answers, you give us the question to that answer. Something. Now, every once in a while, you can probably get it right, right? Right, perfect. But then sometimes you're just like, eh, well, whatever. So then you just move on from there and hey, do you know this answer? We'll find out. Anyway, I'll, I mean, I never play this game. I'll give this game a D, just by nature of I never play it. Then we have the anniversary collection. Exact same thing. However, different questions. So if you already outplayed the first one, you can now play this one, which is, again, like I said, basically the same thing, different questions. I'll put it right next to the other one. I'll give it a, um, a D as well, just because I never play these. Congratulations, if you got it right at home. Then they came out with Jeopardy! Jr. Now, these are supposed to be questions geared more towards the youth, which is great. More, you know, younger based questions, so you can still play along, but the questions are going to be a little bit easier or maybe based more on things that you might be more familiar with. It's still kind of hard, but a little bit better and still set up the same way as the other two Jeopardy games. So if you like those games, want to play those games, questions were too hard, you'll be better off with this one. And I never play it. I'm also giving this game a D. Then for some reason they came out with Super Jeopardy, which speaks and is completely different. This one's not made by Rare. The other ones are actually made by Rare, believe it or not. This one made by someone else and it looks different, sounds different, kind of plays the same though. Check it out. Four players on this one for some reason. Maybe you can do the four player tap. That might be an idea. I bet that's the reason why there's four players on this. Never thought about that. But still, same idea, and I'm also giving this game a D because I never play them. For 600 points, the answer is... It's a daily double. And then randomly out of nowhere, we have a racing game in Nigel Manziel's World Championship Champion. What's it called? World Championship Challenge, World Championship Challenge. That's how much I've ever played this game. I've actually, I played this game a little bit 
because you know what? It's actually a kind of a decent racing game that no one ever talks about. It's from Game Tech, the company that does game shows. Uh, however, um, here's a licensed racing game that actually is kind of good. I mean, it's good if you're into these style of racing games. So, you know, you just you versus the other guys. I think it controls pretty well. Um, could be a little bit tighter on the controls, but I think all racing games could be a little bit tighter on the controls. It has the idea that you can drive off into a pit stop and uh, and do pit stop stuff. <laughs> you know, choose, choose different tires or whatever. And right back to the races. A, a decent racing game out of nowhere. It's still, you know, not the greatest racing game, but it's something different out of game tech of all companies. I'll put this game as a C at least. And then we move on to Wheel of Fortune. There's four of them, and like Jeopardy, some of them pretty similar, one of them completely different. But it's still the same theme of the game, it's just not made by the same company. Not, not made by the same team as the other ones. But we'll talk about them right now. Wheel of Fortune, again, if you're not from the America, not from the United States, um, not familiar with what Wheel of Fortune is, you spin this giant wheel that tells you the price, like the, the point amount, the dollar amount, really. And depending on um, spells out a phrase or a word or a person or something like that, um, you know, if, you, if it lands on a number, you say, I would like an L, please, or whatever. And then um, if there's two L's, they light up, they turn over, and then it reveals more and more pieces. And then if it's like a $100 spot and you ask for L, then you get $200 because there's two tiles that flipped over. Pretty cool. And this one, I'm a little bit easier at this one <laughs> than I am with Jeopardy. And that's really about it. I mean, there's like, you can lose your turn, you can lose your money. Um, you know, there's other prizes you can win, I guess, but really it's all about just spinning the wheel. Um, vowels cost. You have to pay for a vowel, but you know, with uh, so few vowels, turns out all right, because you just have to, it'll really unveil what the answer is once you see those vowels. The first one, I mean, it's Wheel of Fortune. It's pretty good. I play, I come back to it every once in a while. I might play Wheel of Fortune maybe for Super Nintendo a little bit more than the NES one, but the NES one's good to go and I'll get this one to see. And in lieu of the anniversary edition of Jeopardy, we get the family edition of Wheel of Fortune. And same thing, same idea. It's just same thing, more, more things to guess. And it's fine, it's another C. We do have Wheel of Fortune Jr. Might be uh, easier answers on this one. Same idea. <laughs> I'll also give this one a C. And really finally, we have Wheel of Fortune, the Vanna White edition. Now, people watched a Wheel of Fortune because Vanna White was the co-host. She really just walked over and she used to turn the tiles around. Now she just goes over this little touch screen, touch that. But she's, you know, she's an integral part of the show um, because, I don't know, because she's Vanna White. And even though the Vanna White type character was on these other games. She's now actually featured this game on the box art and everything. Got a little licensing deal out of it. So props to uh, Vanna White for, for going through that whole thing. And it looks a little different. I mean, it actually kind of looks like the other Jeopardy one, you know, the uh, the Super Jeopardy or whatever, but it plays like a, plays like Wheel of Fortune and the wheel looks a little bit different. Pretty cool on this one. And every once in a while, you just find those questions. You're just like, what is the answer? I'm getting so close. I have no idea what the answer is. Do you know it yet? Have you figured it out yet? We'll, we'll, we'll speed up the process here. Man, if you knew that, more power to you. You know what, I'll give this game a C. If you're like, where's Price is Right? Where's Password? It turns out those games were going to be made for the NES. They were, but just never came to fruition, never came out. I don't know what happened to them. They would have, I think both of them would have done very well. Would have loved to have seen the $10,000 Pyramid. Want to see some card sharks. Some tic-tac-doe, maybe? I don't know, what are some other classic game shows we should have got on the NES? Let me know in the comments below. And always ranking games, too, so make sure you're subscribed. More videos are always coming out. Thanks for watching.